In today's video, we will be going through five things that every traveler needs to consider before purchasing a carry-on suitcase. You'll learn about luggage features that you maybe didn't even know existed, as well as how to choose the perfect suitcase for your next trip. I'll also show you the carry-on that I am personally using for a trip to Las Vegas, of all places, later this month. The first thing to consider when choosing a carry-on suitcase would be to decide if you want a hard shell or a soft shell. While there are pros and cons to both, there is a clear winner in my mind. A soft suitcase is going to be more flexible, allowing you to do things like slightly unzip the corner and pull something in or out. You also usually have exterior pockets, which are going to give you easy access to your items. Multiple exterior pockets may also make it more difficult to keep your items organized and may make them more vulnerable to theft, especially if there is no TSA approved lock. Another advantage to a hard shell suitcase is that the hard casing is going to provide better protection for your items, not only from any rough handling, but also from rain or snow. Especially if you look for one like the level 8 textured carry-on that has a waterproof and scratch resistant surface. I've partnered with Level 8 Luggage, so the majority of the luggage that I travel with, as well as the majority of the luggage that you will see in this video, will be from the Level 8 carry-on line. You can find a discount code along with the link to any of the Level 8 luggage that I mention in the description. Let us know what style of suitcase you prefer to travel with by leaving hard shell or soft shell down in the comments. The soft shell that I have here is a little bit dated, but even if it was brand new, I would still be choosing a hard casing every time. The second thing to consider before purchasing any luggage would be to check the size and the dimensions and then cross-referencing with the carry-on allowance from your preferred airline. What one airline, or even particular aircraft, may allow as a carry-on could be different from what another allows. I'll leave a link in the description where you can find the baggage limits for most airlines. If you are like me, and you don't have a preferred airline that you always find yourself flying with, then it is best to choose a carry-on suitcase that is going to work for most airlines. The most popular maximum carry-on luggage size is roughly 22 inches by 14 inches by 9 inches. For reference, the one that I have here is the level 8 20 inch full aluminum carry-on. I'm 5 foot 6 and this is how tall the suitcase is beside me. The next thing to consider when choosing a new carry-on suitcase is along the same lines as looking at the size and the dimensions. It would be to check the weight of the empty suitcase. Airlines continue to crack down on carry-on weight limits, but like carry-on size, the allowance is going to vary by airline. Some carry-on weight limit allowances can be as low as 20 pounds. So while a suitcase like the Level 8 full aluminum carry-on has all the bells and whistles with a super sleek design, dual TSA locks, and is virtually indestructible with corner protection, it's not as lightweight as other options, clocking in at just over 10 pounds in comparison to something like the Level 8 Roadrunner carry-on that weighs less than 9 pounds. And while it is important to check the weight of an empty suitcase before you decide to purchase it, it may not actually matter for your trip if one is going to be a few pounds heavier than another. For example, my next trip is going to be to Las Vegas for a conference. And when it comes to business travel, I personally love the design and the little luxurious features like the slow release handle, zipperless design, and the removable interior of the Level 8 aluminum carry-on. Choosing to travel with a slightly heavier suitcase doesn't matter for this trip since I am flying in for three days and then flying out, so I have very little to pack with me. I'm not concerned about being overweight. That being said, when I do travel to Asia for an entire month later this year, I might opt for the Level 8 Roadrunner instead to gain back a few pounds of carry-on allowance since the suitcase itself weighs less. The Roadrunner carry-on is a good example for the next thing that you need to consider when choosing to purchase a suitcase, which would be which features the suitcase has and whether or not you actually need them for the type of trip that you are taking. A unique feature of the Roadrunner is the laptop and tablet compartment with a TSA lock. Something like a laptop compartment is going to be a high value feature for someone that does travel with their devices, but then it may be useless for someone like my father who doesn't even own a laptop. There are some carry-on features that I believe would benefit any traveler. These include having four wheels instead of two, preferably 360 spinner wheels. It is much easier to push a suitcase than it is to pull one. 
and the second feature would be to have at least one TSA lock. A feature that I would recommend against would be the option to expand your suitcase since it may no longer fit the carry-on dimension allowance. Having an expandable suitcase is also going to allow you to pack more, which is not going to be in line with the strict carry-on weight limits that you're trying to meet. If you have an expandable suitcase and it does exceed the weight or the size allowance, you will likely have to pay to check your bag. These expandable suitcases are often not as sturdy and they will be at risk of coming apart while being tossed around with the other checked bags. Before making the final decision on which carry-on suitcase to purchase, definitely check the reviews. I'd love to say that you should check durability when purchasing a new suitcase and make sure the zippers are going to last and that the wheels are sturdy. But these things are going to be difficult to judge until you have actually traveled with the suitcase yourself or until someone else has used it and then lets you know, which is where the reviews come in. Always check reviews before making any purchase and take note of the return policy and the warranty that is offered. So when choosing a carry-on suitcase, be sure to look at the weight, the size, and the features from a lens of the type of travel that you do. And then also check those reviews, warranties, and return policies. And yes, I recognize that I have an unnecessarily large collection of luggage, especially for being in such a small apartment that I already share with this guy. I do, however, want to help you build your own travel collection by launching a monthly newsletter with a high value giveaway, along with some to the point travel news, tips, and hacks. The first giveaway is going to be for over $1,000 worth of brand new luggage, so definitely check out the link in the description for all of the details. Thank you so much for watching, safe travels, and then I hope you'll subscribe so we can see you back here for more travel tips and hacks next week. Bye.